Sadly, we don't get to see the fate of Rurik. Someone else will have done that. Since the Sabiri is a land where many generals have found the opportunity to be something more than just officers, creating separate warlord states based on their beliefs and their goals. While we have shown our willingness to defeat them, and some still resist. Uh, and a prime example of this is Nikolai Andrev. He was both his own state in Krasnyarsk, a d democracy protected by the army, and has amassed popular support by simply promising to fulfill the promises of the people at some point. Of course, this oligarchy cannot stand, and this is the duty of the council to take action and wrestle control of Krasnyarsk. As we grow in power, size, and influence, the swift invasion and defeat of the populist general to our north shall be an easy accomplishment. Don't you mean the guy that we're basically surrounding? How many divisions you got? Two of the four, 25k max. We're going to be able to walk into Abakan. Crashing your ass, we'll be able to hopefully encircle by getting to Achinsk. Achinsk? I think that's right. And then we'll take down those Severisk, and then that gives us a massive front with the. Oh, see, that is, that is ideal. That is ideal. We'll let them go at it. That's what she said. Um, immature, dude, just an immature man. Oh yes, we'll have to dish up all the land as well, the ownership. I think Tomsk could be screwed here. I know the isn't even much stronger, but we'll see what happens. We've got other things to be doing anyways. The fiefdom of Nikolai Andrev has struggled to survive in the sliver of land it occupies between the fanatical black army and the insane monarchs of Kemerovo in the few years it has existed. Starting from the end of Andrev's allegiance to the Central Serbian Republic and now ending, we have made our clear uh, goal clear, and that goal is nothing less than completing unification of Central Siberia under the banner of the Council, with no compromises and no negotiations. Unfortunately for Krasnyarsk, it stands in the way of this noble goal. As such, with the support of our workers and the peasants, we will make our move and take aggressive action against the populace. Should we succeed in this process of liberation, then that will mean one less enemy left to challenge our power. Indeed it does, indeed it does, and then that will mean that there's only two that remain. We'll go ahead and get some land forts, Every army leader gets some wee bonuses, and then we'll do the final fight, and we'll just hop on in and strike them both down. Uniting Siberia, well, Central Siberia, under my lovely banner. Right, uh, let's continue working on industrial stuff. Let's go for the military construction now. Do we have any factories to repair? Yes, we do. Have you announced the creation of the Union Council? Yep, cool, 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 cool. Uh, let's do that, and let's also do the organization again. Resource sabotaged. How bloody dare they? Might as well read the next. Actually, no, because, yeah, Crescent Arash is not allowed to be around. We shall begin a campaign against the last remnants of Crescent Arash. Oh, we'll offer amnesty. I'm going to try and be, well, not peaceful, but be a nice guy. To, that's, well, to some extent. Chopper boys, and circle. You, can you just, like, walk on bloody round? I'm going to use walk on round as well. Pushing over crashing your ass is so silly. Oh, bye, Mr. H. So long, farewell. Auf Wiedersehen, goodbye. I don't know how that would you manage to move, because it wasn't exactly doing anything. Like we were attacking there. Is that division seriously moving out? Oh, it was. What happened? Oh, civil war time! And Europe is ablaze! It has become a hellhole of fire. Yep, German Civil War time. Can I actually have a wee look at Hydrix tree? Who the hell are- oh, it's Poland. <laughs> it's like, who the hell are they? Goring's Germany has a new flag. Okay. Oh, blink it out. Do it for Germany. We'll primarily receive support from Himmler will be pleased. Himmler will not be pleased. Hmm. The Grails will win Legion. 
Sorry. Leon de Grel. <sighs> Victory or death. Oh, okay. He has the hardest civil war to win. It's like he is oh, pathetic size compared to everyone else. He's got to go into massive defensive. I'll maybe leave that for when I've got a bit more free time. I was planning on doing it this week, but we'll see what happens. See how I feel at the later stages of the week. Dennis, let's just focus on our wars. I could actually be doing another focus. And the Franco Burgundian War has he is has arrived. Can can some of you guys actually go up there, please? That that division is literally grinding itself into the dirt. Chaos and Ausland. Just thinking, we don't really need to be aggressive as such on these guys. They're, they're pretty much dead in there. And Spiedel is taking control of Germania. Good for him. Yep, that, that has been one of the quickest bloody wars that ever exists. And now it's the English Civil War. Expansion to Africa. Warsaw Uprising, everything is kicking off. Oh no! Oh damn, have that HMMLR's England has got flipping support all over the bit. 20 to 41 divisions. Oh, if you don't win this, I'm going to be shocked as hell. Hey, we've got the railway junction. Division speed, supply construction speed. Fast, bloody tastic. Anyways, I'm going to offer amnesty. Krasnyarsk has often been called the land of opportunists, as most of its leaders and oligarchs do not have any strong belief in certain ideology, but simply grab the chance to become leaders and end the support of the people. It's the lack of ideology that also means many in the military and administration are not fanatics, and thus have a chance of defecting to our side if they see that the war favours the council. The perfect way to encourage this exact behaviour is by promising complete amnesty to any member of the enemy's government and military that decides to make this choice. After all, if they truly wish to follow the wishes of the people, then it's only logical they decide the state of socialism and liberty we have created. The hidden heroes, why well, flipping hell, the hidden heroes are all the bloody bit. All they really need to do is just... just oh, the Africa Shield. More wars breaking out. It's absolutely unbelievable. I've never seen them take up that much control before. Yep, more wars. War never changes. Hello, Dunitz, how are you doing? I I'm actually in complete shock of this. Because that division's... How many other divisions have got up there? Dead. And as long as they keep them oh, can, under control. South African War. Oh, they lost Bristol. Just a f oh, oh dear. I forgot they were one though. Just calm down. Oh, I can't wait to get back to my Ireland playthrough actually. I'll be doing that after this episode. Uh, prepare our troops. We'll have to do all of those. So, both fortifications. Great enemies from the anarchist army to the madman of Kimmerovo have fallen as we continue to expand. A large swath of land, is land stretching across Siberia is now occupied by the People's Revolutionary Council. As opposed to what little ground we used to hold before we began our path of liberation. As we expand though, we must also consider defensive measures. Specifically, much of the high command has stated that they wish for construction of fortifications along our western frontier. Where we face the biggest threats and where preparations for war are absolutely needed. This defensive line will be a good use of our limited military budget. For now, I'm oh sorry, for we will be able to safely keep our lands with no necess unnecessary sacrifices of men required. The best engineers and military experts will thus be given the task of completing the construction for the good of the council. And I also forgot to do, 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 do. Yeah, don't 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 care for that. I need to core this. 50 days each, let's just do them all. A um, very interesting border we've got going on here. Uh, how many divisions you got? 4 to 8, 4 to 6. Tomsk, you're going down. 
Tomsk is going to be first. Take down the stronger, leave it the weaker, more pathetic nation left is going to be a very beneficial plan for us. So we'll probably have today's episode being longer because I just fancy uniting Siberia before we uh, call it a day. Yeah, socialism will gain cores on all of the central Siberia. Good. Good, good, good. And we'll get some more. Does Tomsk have any little uh, special national spirits? Little wonders, as I think they're called. No, no, I don't I don't think they do. Does Novosibirsk? Yes, they do. The aircraft plant. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. No idea what's going on with Tomsk, but... Um, I know it's a risk because I'm going to be able to 3 to 7 now. Ah, yes. Poland are now going at it. Got D-Miller. Ah, yes, because Turkey lost. Right, prepare our troops. A great step forward in achieving the reclamation. Do you want know we'll read and progress? Uh, of the central Siberia has been um, has come to be completed. We must prepare for the next outburst of action against the giants we now have to face. Our army, while it is certainly well equipped and trained, will have well equipped. <laughs> um, uh, will have to be prepared for a new environment and a new method of warfare. That more of expansive and more intense battles. New manuals, military exercises, and war games are being prepared by the council's high command solely for the purpose of helping the army adjust to the new situation we find ourselves in. The separate must be encouraged if we want to excel in the battlefield when the battle starts. So every leader add the following bonus effects for the army for 35 days. 10 offense, 25 breakthrough, cannot retreat while defending, and war support reduction on damage, 5%. Okay, that's some very nice little bonuses. And we've got the final fight. And it's time to give everything we have in the final phase of defeating our regional enemies. The last remnants of the Central, uh, Central Siberian Republic must be erased at all costs. The People's Revolution Council has proven itself to be the strongest competitor in the region. If you need anyone who has stood in its way, only one last push remains to be made, and that is the great attack westward. Using the power we have accumulated from our previous conquest, the thrust will have to be supported by everything we have um, at our disposal. It is hoped that in the streets of the Tomsk and Novosibirsk, the people will soon have the chance to come out and celebrate the liberation, probably waving the flag of the council. Our military, from its troubled beginnings and its struggle for survival, is now the greatest tool we have for the liberation of the people. The next phase of the liberation begins now. Indeed it does. Indeed it does. Let me start that boa. How's the war progressing? Tomsk has been taken. Yeah, so how much? 20... Oh, we actually do have more manpower, but I have more divisions, so I will be able to sneak around, hopefully. They both have 4 to 6, so I literally just need to encircle divisions, and then we'll be fine. So, we're going after Tomsk. Tomsk was born of the ashes of the old Central Siberian Republic. As the Siberian War stretched uh, the country to its absolute limit, it collapsed and what remained of its establishment itself in Tomsk. It was ruled by Pasenak and his successor for a long time, and it made itself known by being a state of intellectuals, composed the composers of societies. Now they must all suffer due to the poor choice they made. The remnants of the old republic will be crushed with no mercy, and its leaders will be dealt with. Oh, wow. Overwhelmed the German influence. Of course they did. The proud army of the council made the right preparations and stands on the unofficial border, ready to receive orders. Once, consider once considered one of the two giants of Central Spire, Tomsk will crumble in front of the council, which will be ready to take its position. Oh, hell yeah. We've got some uh, planes and everything now. And we have a couple of military factories broken and some civvies. Not ideal. And uh, yes, crush the artists' republic. Goodbye, Tomsk. It probably does mean that Krasnirask, not Krasnirask, Novosibirsk is going to get all the land. That's fine. Hunt down the Siberian Falcon. Novosibirsk. 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 I've probably been saying it wrong. It uh, made it itself known in Siberia by its sheer power and influence. With an amount of population, industry, and natural resources to use greater uh, than most warlords, it is only logical that it grew to become a strong fighting force and one that could challenge the CSR's authority. All the resources in Nikolai, that Nikolai um, Pokryskin, the notorious Siberian Falcon, has at his possession are crucial to our uh, cause and must be seized for the good of the motherland. 
As they were the most formidable forces we had to face in our battle of reunification, we must use everything we've got to the oligarchs from the, uh, Novosibirsk. Um, Novosibirsk, that's what it is. They must be crushed under the heel of the People's Revolution Council. Indeed they shall. Looks like Tomsk is actually pushing back. Both got three to five. Absolutely pathetic. That's all I can say about that. Hey, 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 it's your favorite boy. It's the council. Oh, and I can actually do some things while we're at war. Tomsk is not densely populated, is not a densely populated warlord state, nor a heavily defended one. Despite the power of the local uh, militia that is, has amassed for its defense, in front of these deorganized, uh, disorganized militia units, our own army of the far eastern military district is much stronger. For that reason, despite the advantage the enemy may have in the field such as industry, the Council's generals believe in fast charge against Tomsk that will achieve their final elimination. By making an attack from all sides and overwhelming them with professional tactics, it's possible to overrun Tomsk and win this war with a surprisingly small amount of time. The plan of a quick victory is certainly ambitious, yet it is within the realm of possibility that we can implement. Bonus attack for 60 days. I bloody deal. No, don't you dare try and cut us off. Called Pashevo is going to be ours. It's going to be mine. All mine. HMMLR victorious in the English Civil War. Who would have seen that coming? Oh my days. We can almost modernize our army. You idiots, get off of that. Oh, he's on there. Keep going. You to call Pashevo. I need to start getting in some good old support equipment and some motorized. There we go. I think we're catching up on everything. Yes, we are. Good. We get helicopters and tanks, of course. Right, let's improve the infantry anti tank. You, you. Okay, you guys have ended up at war. Cool. Ah, oh, because Zukov's there. Zukov's fifth up. Right, we've done that. And corporate friendly elements spread political division. Yeah, we'll do that. The divisions rift between the competing politic groups and Tom's could easily be used to the council advantage. The factions that stri uh, striven for dominance are many. And they inspire names like humanists and uh, Bastelards, but what we truly care about is exploiting them for our own purposes. As we continue our invasion, penetrating deeper into Tom's land and defeating the armies, we can spark discontent and war uh, weariness in the internal affairs of our enemy. Union secret deals, bribes, and channels to influence them. It is enough to stage protests or clashes or back anti-war sentiment to hopefully send the Democrats into a spiral of self-destruction. As they struggle to control uh, the situation within their own zone, our campaign of liberation will be easier done. Right, resource excavation. I'm taking the capital. If I can get Tomsk, I might actually end up getting all the land. Because it's whoever capitulates them that wins, right? Divisions, I need you to move quickly. Helicopter boys got himself in a little bit of trouble. The cavalry's coming in. He's a coming. I wonder if you actually want to go and grab that for us. And maybe someone else wants to help with this bunch here. You! And get off these silly little borders. Yeah, I want I want everybody and their mums on that, please. I've only done thirty percent of the fighting. Thirty thousand. Blinking out, I've only lost two hundred forty-one men. 
I bloody deal. Yeah, I'm not going to bother doing anything else for now. I'll just take the 10 days little bonus on the next one. Hi, Tomsk. This will be where all your divisions are hiding then. It's a good thing I'm bringing the boys down. Come on down, boys. Come on down. The gods of the north. And Italy's going off Croatia. The divine mandate of Siberia. Damn it, you had to take it, didn't you? Saying that, oh, might be able to win here. Oh, hi, 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 oh, oh. It's a very hotly contested subject right now. It's just us against Tomsk, it's one division. Croatia died as flipping quick as anything there, jeez. Damn, son. The stays are defeated. So much PP, man. So much PP. And give me Tomsk. Pfft. Give me all of it. <laughs> Unlucky son. Right, we've read this. Let's take them down. And then we'll call it a day because we're already at 45 minutes. Damn. We'll maybe do some editing and remove some of the, uh, the gaps. We can modernize the army. Oh. The Iron Beast. Snow on the steeps again, and Zitze, as ever, is first to wake. For a moment, he sits half huddled and blanket around his waist, watching the squad around what remains of the campsite. And counting off Idigu, Tudan, Slava, the officer. Then the old academy training kicks into gear, and this barks in order, rousing his men one by one in a frenzy. And he casts worried glances at the hulk of half painted steels behind them. Uh, mentally counting off steps, rehearsing. The exercise is near its final stage. The men still grumbling push the beast, uh, Bankar. Tudan calls it. Forward in the lumbering track, its wheels leaving thick imprints behind it. Uh, Zitze, Zev, Ziatzev, I don't know how you pronounce that, leads them forward, checking the newfound compass and the occasional stirrings on the radio for signs of activity. The world slips away in an endless rhythm of push, 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 like a struggling midlife, a midwife in an endless delivery. In a stroke of mercy, the officer calls for a halt. They have found their firing position. Edigu and Tudan spring into action, loading blanks and aiming at the beast of pre-rehearsed coordinates. And Zitzev, Ziatzev, I don't know how to murders, uh, curses in his breath and he interprets it, the maps in his hands. One, then another, then another shell is fired and then, blessedly, it is over. As Zietzev um, summons his men to prepare for the withdrawal, the long, long track back to the base, the officer smiles and gestures behind him. The young sergeant turns, bewildered, and then drops to his knees. This is kicking up in long trails behind the shiny new motor trucks. That now dot the horizon, and the men in the way, and then wave and smile, gesturing obscenely. If the SF can touch them now, he'd have tried to kiss them on the lips. Okay, interesting. And we've modernized our army. Perfect. That's what I like to see a modern fighting force. So, do you know what I think we're going to actually do? We're just going to man this side of the line. Just concentrate our forces and just smash right through. They can push north if they want to, because my capital is down here. Maybe I should have waited until everyone was in position. But you, yes, encircle their divisions. You just get right to the bloody capital. Infiltrate their army. Let's deal with the supply lines. The lines are enemy used to funnel its troops and supplies to the front line that needs them. And well known, and even if they are not, they are not terribly hard to discover in the sparse Siberian lands. The Siberian army is aware supply lines are the key behind the scenes to a fighting war, and we can target them to sabotage the enemy. Special agents, friendly rebels, other people associated with us can begin clandestine operations to disrupt these lines. There are many methods to do this, from the classic bombing of a road or railway to bandit attacks to even bombing raids. Well, the latter may be difficult as the Siberian Falcon is known for his de de dedication to a probable air force. We must examine our possibility and use everything we have in our great war. What, what? They have an air force? No.
Oh crap, so they do. Oh well, on the plus side, um, I only got a division circled and he's going to die. And we've already taken over Sybarisk and I'm just going to go ahead and cut right across and cut them off. Whereas this division is going to go around you. Kemerovo is now their capital. Oh, that is tragic. How many divisions they got? Three to five. One of them's already encircled. One's pushing pointlessly north, while the other one's about to get encircled over here in Kemerovo. Perfect, man. Perfect. Where's their capital? Oh, yes, Kemerovo. Kemerovo that is now 100% bloody encircled. Yeah, if you just want to then take take those two bits, please. You, sir, just come across here. Because when I use me, we want to come in behind this gentleman here. And again, we've already got you. You can actually come down and cause a wee ruckus. And we won. The Kutzen Basin. Ah, oh, perfect. And look at us. We are bloody glorious. And what does that mean we can do? Oh, yes. That means we can do this. The provisional, the provisionary Central Siberian Revolutionary Council. A boom. Oh, the People's Revolutionary Council was initially created by Alexander Vasilvesky and his close advisors and subordinates in their race to escape Nazi occupied Russia and reach the Mongolian People's Republic. Despite all the challenges they faced due to the rival government of Minjiang occupied, occupied much of Mongolia, the socialist state has looked elsewhere to expand, specifically the rest of central Siberia. The council has defeated its formidable enemies in the region and now claim the entirety of it to the name of the new Soviet Union they seek to establish. Elsewhere in the Russia, rival warlords speak Spectate, either with admiration or concern, this new challenger for national dominance. Ah, and perfect. We now have another research slot. Perfect. And of course, we have Tomsk, Novosibirsk, and Kemerovo all to integrate. But, oh, damn, are we looking good? That's all bypassed. So, we've got the air bases. We've got a couple more focuses to finish, and then we'll open up a new one. So, yeah, we're going to leave that episode there, guys. Um, I might actually have split this into two parts. We'll see, just because it is at 51 minutes. But anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I should be back very soon for another episode. Until then, take care. Goodbye. Then now.